and welcome to episode three of The Six Shifts with Katie Egan Cunningham, Jan Birkins, and Carrie Yates, co-authors of Shifting the Balance, Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom, published by Stenhouse Publishers. In this series, Katie, Jan, and Carrie, along with The Six Shifts' Maggie Thorson, address six more evidence-based shifts that teachers can make to bring the science of reading into the upper elementary classroom. Our previous episode focused on how knowledge impacts reading comprehension. In this episode, the authors talk about the second new shift, rethinking the role of strategy instruction in learning to comprehend. We're back together again. And we're going to continue our conversation about the new Shifting the Balance book and dig into Shift 2. Before we begin digging into that new Shift 2, let's take a moment to have you share again why you chose to extend this original Shifting the Balance book that had a K-2 focus to a 3-5 audience. Well, Maggie, when the K-2 book came out, it quickly became apparent that educators were looking for support in navigating the conversations and the confusion, even polarization that had been stirred up in the literacy field in these last years. And and not just in theoretical ways. They didn't just want a lot of theory, but they also wanted practical application of that theory. And We started hearing from teachers in grades three through five that they too were looking for a resource they could turn to that would address some of the unique challenges and questions that that they were grappling with. And Katie had been on sort of this parallel journey into the reading science when she reached out to us. And I remember I was standing in Home Depot waiting for my husband when I scrolling on my phone and I opened Katie's very compelling and courageous email suggesting ultimately that maybe the three of us consider teaming up to extend the intent and the ideas of the K2 book to reach the needs of developing readers. And here we are. Here we are. (laughs) (laughs) Well, three cheers for courage and uh, compelling emails. We're so glad you sent it, Katie. When we think about shift two, shift two is all about reading comprehension strategies. (laughs) And I know I'm so excited to have you share what you found out about their role in reading instruction. This is a, this is a big one. (laughs) It's huge. (laughs) Uh, I think we might've also spent the most time on untangling what to do about comprehension strategy instruction. So Where strategy instruction fits in is really important because research shows us that explicitly teaching a handful of strategies that proficient readers use is really beneficial. But I think a lot of teachers struggle with how much strategy instruction is just enough. And it's easy to lose sight of the goal of all of that instruction, which is meaningful reading. And That happens, I think, when strategy instruction seems to demand so much time and so much attention. For sure. And so we really set out to try to figure out just how much strategy instruction children really need and when does it actually become a barrier to reading. And there isn't a simple answer. There's, we just, it's not simple. It will depend on the readers in front of you and the strengths and the challenges that they bring to text. But nevertheless, there are some things, some really important things to understand about the ways that reading strategies can be helpful and also some ways that overemphasis on them can actually get in the way. Yeah. So are you able to share a little bit? What misunderstandings do a lot of us have about reading strategy instruction? Well, there are some misunderstandings here. And, you know, right out of the gate, misunderstanding one is this idea that comprehension is a skill, when really comprehension is an outcome of many things. So we emphasize that reading comprehension is a complex, multifaceted, interactive process that really depends on the interplay of a whole array of things like vocabulary 
um, knowledge, working memory, flexible thinking, familiarity with language structures, you know, understanding of text structures, verbal reasoning, motivation. It's just <laughs> the, the list is long and it's not a single skill. And so as reading teachers, we really have to understand the complex demands that comprehension places on a reader's brain, especially when the text is about an unfamiliar topic or has unfamiliar words. And so navigating those demands does require a lot more than just having some reading strategies in your toolkit. Another common misunderstanding that we unpack in this chapter is in misunderstanding three. And this is the idea that children need to learn a lot of different comprehension strategies. And when we dug into the research, we found that, in fact, they don't. And what we did find, though, is that there are a few strategic and often overlapping moves that really stand out in the research. And these are actions that readers can take to help themselves comprehend. And really, for decades, research has found that these are the moves that proficient readers constantly make, but that the less proficient readers in our classroom might need more time to practice before they become automatic, which is the ultimate goal, right? That these strategies become a part of them. So we prioritized six of these science-supported thinking moves. We gave them some kid-friendly labels that we think are really memorable, because I also think as teachers, we're memory makers. And we provide a brief description and some examples of what that thinking move requires of readers. And we refer to them throughout the book as the strategic six thinking moves. Yeah. I don't know how we came to the end of our time together today already. I know that shift two sounds like a meaty one. If you had to give us a little summary statement in a nutshell, what's the heart of shift two? Well, in the first half of shift two, we unpack four misunderstandings. Katie and Carrie just told you about two of them. You know, in light of some of the fascinating and sometimes surprising research. So readers can expect the opportunity to stretch their thinking a bit about strategy <laughs> yeah. instruction. I, I know <laughs> we certainly experienced that Ours in the process. Was. Yes. yes. And you may find that some practices which have been near and dear to our daily practice, they may need some rethinking. There's that vulnerable work we were talking about earlier. And so Although strategy instruction may have become synonymous with reading instruction in many cases, there is room, there certainly is room for some brain-friendly adjustments here since learning strategies isn't the point of reading instruction. Mm -hmm. And then in the second half of Shift 2, we present some really practical but high leverage instructional routines to help teachers make these adjustments. And we address everything from asking more connected questions that do a lot more than just give practice with a strategy to really shaking up our practices for text selection to you know finding ways to weave the strategic six thinking moves into our instruction in smart and authentic ways. There's a lot there for teachers. Well, ladies, rethinking the role of strategy instruction in learning to comprehend, indeed. You gave me, I know, and lots of listeners something to certainly rethink. I'm looking forward to our conversation next time around vocabulary instruction. Shifting the Balance. Six Ways to Bring the Science of Reading into the Upper Elementary Classroom by Katie Egan Cunningham, Jen Birkins, and Carrie Yates is available from Stenhouse Publishers. You can learn more about these six new shifts, the six shifts from the first book, and the companion online classes for both books at www.thesixshifts.com. We hope you enjoyed listening to The Six Shifts with Katie Egan Cunningham, Jen Birkins, and Carrie Yates. In our next episode, we'll talk about Shift 3 in the book, which is all about vocabulary instruction. Wondering whether to teach vocabulary to your students explicitly or implicitly? Then you'll want to listen in to the next podcast. We'd love to hear your feedback. Get in touch with us at marketing at stenhouse.com, and please share this with your colleagues who you think would enjoy listening too.
Thanks for listening.